As quarterbacks from the 2019 NFL Draft, like Kyler Murray and Drew Locke, receive hype, it feels like Dwayne Haskins has flown under the radar this offseason. The second-year passer improved greatly over the final games of 2019 and was even named Rookie of the Week after passing for 261 yards and two touchdowns against the Eagles. Haskins has dropped 17 pounds since entering the league and has been on a mission to improve this offseason. He, without a doubt, could break out this season for the newly named Washington football team. Before we jump into Dwayne Haskins, I'd like to take a second to acknowledge that the majority of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. Darren and I are both college students and hope to one day make this our full-time job. So please, if you do enjoy, consider subscribing and helping us on our journey here on YouTube. Thank you and enjoy the video. It feels like some people have already given up on Dwayne Haskins, but the guy isn't just young. He's actually younger than Joe Burrow, who he beat out at Ohio State, forcing Burrow to transfer to LSU. Haskins is raw and is still inexperienced. Let's take a look at how Haskins found his way to the NFL after only a single season starting in college. Dwayne Haskins Jr. was born on May 3rd, 1997 in Highland Park, New Jersey. He goes by the nickname Simba, derived from the movie The Lion King. When Haskins was in ninth grade, he moved to Potomac, Maryland, where he attended Bullis School. As a Bulldog, Haskins passed for 5,308 yards and 54 touchdowns. He committed to play college football at the University of Maryland, but after head coach Randy Edsall was fired midway through 2015, he decided to decommit and instead attend Ohio State University. Haskins redshirted his first season at Ohio State. Then in 2017, Haskins served as the Buckeyes' backup behind JT Barrett. In limited play, Haskins recorded 565 yards and four touchdowns to an interception. After Barrett graduated, Haskins had done enough for the starting job, a realization that caused Joe Burrow to transfer from Ohio State to LSU. Haskins had a stellar sophomore season, setting Big Ten records with 4,831 yards and 50 touchdowns. He had only eight interceptions on the year. Haskins helped the Buckeyes to a 13-1 record. He was named MVP of the Big Ten Championship and later the Rose Bowl. Haskins was named first team all Big Ten and and finished third in Heisman voting behind Kyler Murray and Tua Tungaviola. After a single season starting, Haskins announced he would declare for the 2019 NFL Draft. He was lucky to have a good mentor in Muhammad Sanu by his side during both high school and college. Haskins showed great talent in his single season starting at Ohio State. He had good throwing mechanics with his arm and showed the ability to make throws with his natural arm talent. Additionally, at his 6 foot 3, 231 pound stature, he stood tall in the pocket. The biggest issue issue with Haskins coming into the draft was his slow progressions and ability to read defense, both of which were noticeable during his rookie campaign and honestly expected due to him only playing one year in college. At the draft, the Washington Redskins selected Haskins with the 15th pick. The Redskins wanted to give Haskins time to sit behind Case Keenum and learn. However, Haskins was thrown into action in week four against the Giants after poor play from Keenum. One thing was clear after his relief appearance, Haskins wasn't ready. He struggled greatly, throwing three interceptions, including a pick six, and only had 107 yards. Returning to the backup role, Haskins came in relief of Keenum again in week eight against the Vikings, recording a mere 144 yards. A big improvement, thanks in part to having a week of preparation as the starter. Two weeks later against the Lions, Haskins secured his first career win. He had 156 yards and an interception in the victory. After a slow start, Haskins showed a lot of promise later in the season. Season. He was named NFL Rookie of the Week in Week 15 after passing for 261 yards and two touchdowns against the Eagles. He was playing well again the following week against the Giants and had 133 yards and two touchdowns in only one half before suffering an ankle injury. As a starter, Haskins recorded 1,225 yards, seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. Haskins improved over the course of the season and gave fans hope of a potential sophomore breakout. In addition, he showed the ability to make changes to his game and rarely made the same mistakes twice. One thing he struggled with the most that I recognized was his inconsistent footwork. Haskins would often fail to set his feet or direct them towards the target, something that would result in wildly inaccurate passes from time to time. Haskins has good arm talent and power, but his accuracy was frustrating. I'm an avid Washington fan, and watching 2019 closely, I can testify that Haskins, simply put, was set up to fail as a rookie. Head coach Jay Gruden had his job on the line and made it clear that he was willing 
willing to do whatever it took to win, and had little interest in working on a project quarterback. When Gruden was fired, interim head coach Bill Callahan took over. Callahan, as a lot of Washington fans know, is notorious for only running the ball and limiting a passer's attempts. It worked at times, but it isn't what you'd like with a rookie quarterback who you're trying to groom. Unfortunately, the Washington aerial attack is still extremely weak going into 2020. Last year, their top weapon was Terry McLaurin, a third round rookie. McLaurin had 919 yards and seven touchdowns, great numbers despite missing two games. Furthermore, no receiver had over 400 yards and their top tight end, Jeremy Sprinkle, had 214 yards and a touchdown. Washington looked to acquire Amari Cooper this year in free agency, offering him a monster contract, but he turned it down to return to the Cowboys. The offense is going to have to continue to rely on young talent in 2020, with some notable names like fourth rounder Antonio Gandy-Golden and undrafted tight end Thaddeus Moss leading the way. It didn't help that Haskins' offensive line was miserable in 2019, something that is still a work in progress. Last offseason, Lamar Jackson beefed up and focused on improving his passing accuracy. It resulted in a dominant NFL MVP season. In no way am I comparing Haskins to Jackson, but at least in terms of what we've seen, Haskins has been putting in work this offseason. Haskins has said that he will be more of a dynamic football player this season after dropping down to 218 pounds, down 17 pounds from his previous 235 pound mark about a year ago. There have obviously been some wild changes in Washington this offseason. The franchise has made the switch from the Washington Redskins to the Washington football team, and recently the organization has been under fire for sexual misconduct allegations against former staff. It feels like forever ago, but Washington signed Ron Rivera to take over as head coach. Jay Gruden had been fired mid-season in 2019, allowing Bill Callahan to take over as interim head coach. This means that Haskins will be entering his fourth different offense in three years this season. The good news for Haskins is that Rivera is expected to be the future in Washington for quite some time. Rivera showcases distinct advantages over the previous regiment in Washington. Rivera is a two-time coach of the year and led the Panthers to the Super Bowl in 2015. He has also worked with a young quarterback before in Cam Newton, but does specialize on the defense defensive side of the ball. This means that a main person involved in the future progression of Haskins is new offensive coordinator Scott Turner, who served as the quarterback's coach in Carolina for Rivera for two years. His dad, Norv Turner, is a Redskins former head coach. Scott Turner is a young, inexperienced coordinator, but comes into the scene in Washington with plenty of knowledge he's learned under his dad. If Rivera and Turner truly do have the best interests of Haskins in mind, along with Haskins working hard day in and out, the future in Washington could be bright if they continue to build around Haskins. It feels like the media has already taken Haskins as the bust out of the class, but it's way too early. Drew Locke, who has often been touted as the future of the Broncos, and for good reason, resembled Haskins at times. Haskins was put in twice without any preparation. Both resulted in disastrous performances with clear confusion, but once he had preparation, he improved greatly. Comparing only stats from starts during both of their seasons, each of them passed for seven touchdowns and three interceptions. Haskins Haskins passed for 1,225 yards in seven games, and Locke had 1,020 yards in five games. Not to mention that Locke clearly had better pieces around him at all times, like Cortland Sutton. The stat disparities and even play weren't far off, yet the perception of the two greatly differ. The jury is still out on Dwayne Haskins after one season, but look at what we've seen from second-year quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes recently. If you have to take a chance on a quarterback from the 2019 NFL Draft to break out, Haskins is near the the top of that list. I wasn't a fan of Haskins coming out of college, but the raw talent that he possesses is incredible. If he can put it all together and continue to progress, along with the help of the new staff in Washington, Haskins may put the NFL on high alert.